Hello and welcome to this short video brought to you by tutor to you This video is going to be looking at the AQA A-Level Specification for Psychology and in particular we are going to be recapping research methods and reliability. So what is reliability? Reliability is a measure of whether something stays the same. In other words, it's consistent. The results of psychological investigations are said to be reliable if they are similar each time. They are carried out using the same design, procedures and measurements. Reliability can be split into two main branches, internal reliability and external reliability. Let's start by taking a look at internal reliability. Internal reliability describes the internal consistency of a measure. In other words, the consistency within itself such as whether the different questions, known as items, in a questionnaire are all measuring the same thing. One way to assess this is by using the split half method, where data collected is split randomly in half and compared to see if results taken from each part of the measure are similar. It therefore follows that reliability can be improved if items that produce similar results are used. On the contrary, External reliability assesses consistency when different measures of the same thing are compared. In other words, does one measure match up against other measures? Discrepancies will consequently lower inter-observer reliability. For example, results could change if one researcher conducts an interview differently to another. Such reliability issues can be improved by standardising procedures, and we will talk about this in a different video. This basically means making sure that procedures are carried out the same way each time. For instance, by implementing interviewer training and or practice through pilot studies. So how can we assess the reliability of something? First of all, we're going to look at the test retest method. Test retest is a way of assessing the external reliability of a research tool. It involves presenting the same participants with the same test or questionnaire on two separate occasions and seeing whether there is a positive correlation between the two. If the test or questionnaire is reliable, then the results obtained should be the same, or at least very similar, each time they are administered. There should be sufficient time between the initial test and retest so that the participant cannot recall their original answers, but not so long that the participants' opinions or attitudes might have changed. A second way of assessing reliability is inter-observer reliability. Now, it's very important to establish inter-observer reliability when conducting observational research. This refers to the extent to which two or more observers are observing and recording behaviour in the same way. This might involve a pilot study, which is a small-scale trial run, of the observation to check that observers are applying behavioural categories in the same way. Now remember, behavioural categories are just ways of measuring behaviour that you are looking to observe. So if you are looking to observe someone's happiness level, a behavioural category might be the amount of time somebody smiles. So if we run a small scale pilot study of the observation, we can check that the observers are applying these behavioural categories in the same way. What one person sees as a smile, so does the other. So in the previous slide, we've looked at how we might assess the reliability of something, test, retest, and inter-observer reliability. For the next few slides, we're going to look at how we might improve reliability through different research methods. Again, this is another common exam question you might get asked. So you might be given a step within the research method section, and then a question which follows, how could the researcher have improved the reliability of the study? So if the method which is used in the STEM is a questionnaire, how could we improve the reliability? The reliability of questionnaires over time should be measured using the test retest method. Two sets of data will be correlated to see whether they match, measured statistically using a statistical test of correlation such as Spearman's row. Once the test has been performed on the two sets of data, a correlation coefficient will then be calculated. The value of the coefficient must be plus 0 0.80 or above for data to be judged as reliable. A questionnaire that produces low test retest reliability may have to be edited. One solution might be to replace some of the open questions, where there might be more room for misinterpretation, with closed questions, which could be less ambiguous. 
let's take a look at how we might improve reliability of interviews. For interviews, the best way to ensure reliability is to use the same interviewer each time. If this is impossible, interviewers should be trained so one interviewer is not asking more leading or ambiguous questions, for example. Remember, reliability is all about keeping things consistent. This is more easily avoided in structured interviews where the interview is more controlled through the use of fixed questions, as opposed to unstructured interviews, which are more flexible and a little bit more free flowing. So again, if you were asked how to improve the reliability of an interview, you might say, where possible, use the same interviewer. If it's not possible, train your interviewers or use structured interviews rather than unstructured interviews. How might we improve the reliability of an experiment? Now, lab experiments are the method most often considered to be reliable due to the high degree of control over many aspects of the procedures, such as the instructions that participants receive and the conditions within which they are tested. However, one thing that might slightly affect the reliability is if participants were tested under slightly different conditions each time. So we just need to be aware of this. So yes, lab experiments are the most reliable, arguably due to the high level of control. However, if participants are tested under slightly different conditions each time, this could then affect the reliability. And finally, how might we improve the reliability of observations? Reliability of observations can be improved by making sure behavioural categories have been properly operationalised. Operationalisation is another word that people seem to hate. It's quite scary, it's quite daunting. But it really just means something super simple. Operationalization is turning abstract concepts such as social anxiety into behaviours that we can measure, such as behavioural avoidance of crowds of places or physical anxiety symptoms in social situations. In an observation, categories should not overlap and all possible behaviours should be covered on a checklist. If categories are not operationalised well or are overlapping or absent, Different observers have to make their own judgments of what to record and may well end up with differing and inconsistent records. Thank you for watching this AQA A Level Psychology video brought to you by Tutor2U, which focused on research methods and reliability.